And we're back, regular viewers. So this week, uh, different video, shorter video, I, th I think. Um, it's, a, it's a short topic. I was trying to do a, a video on getting ready for springtime fishing. And I made up uh, these twin tails here for the back of my chatterbaits and jigs. Uh, check out my videos on making chatterbaits weedless and making homemade jigs. Um, how to make, you know, any kind of uh, jig head weedless kind of situations or make your own jig heads uh, with plaster of Paris. But um, yeah, I made up these guys right here. I probably don't have to put them all out. I think you get the point. And uh, I was like, let's get ready for springtime fishing, you know. Um, and then I looked back at these and I don't like this color. So it has gotten worse. Um, and that's one of the things with remelts is you have to be really careful um, with your colorations. If you overheat them, they start to burn and everything turns like a dark brown. That's not what happened here. Um, this is just a, a culmination of uh, lots of different colors to try to get this brown. I wanted more red and I have been using mica powder for a long time to get my reds and uh here's some of those these are like a chameleon-y mica powder ishness thing i got off of amazon um they kind of i don't know what color that's going to look like on the camera but it's kind of a pink gold dark pink gold thingy uh this one's a purple bluish i just dumped it all over the table purple bluish reddish and this one is a uh, pink red kind of thingamahoozit. Anyway, with their powers combined, I was making um, some passable reds, but um, not red enough. So I got to thinking, what do I need to do it better? Because we can't just go spend money, guys. <laughs> I'm just a regular guy here. Um, I have a very limited budget on what I can spend on this project, you know, uh, project fishing addiction. And... Um, so I got to find a way to dye these lures more red with the cheapest way possible. So I was like, I need to get an oil-based dye that's not a fishing product because, um, you know, just like if you're buying something for your boat, they put the word marine on it and uh, you might as well just go up, you know, 38 and a half percent on uh, the already inflated price. So anyway, um, I did some looking and I said oil-based dye. What can I find that's an oil-based dye? And I found oil-based food coloring. Well, hot dog. I said, I wonder if that'll work. And, uh, well, you know what, kids? It works. And I think I'll put this up. Um, I'll ask the regular editor, please, to put this up. I got this on Amazon. This really wasn't expensive at all. And it came with all of these here oil-based colors. And the reason we need oil-based, of course, is because Plastisol is an oil-based product. And it doesn't play well with water unless you want it to explode because oil and water doesn't mix, right? But um, I'm going to demonstrate to you guys how this worked. And, um, and you'll be surprised how well and how inexpensive this is. And this is the color I came up with here that I'm going to demonstrate for you. I call it crawfish candy because that sounded fun. I'm from the Northeast and we don't say crawfish. But um, now that I don't live in the Northeast, I have to say crawfish. Um, but yeah, this was the color that I had made originally. And like I said, um, on this really ugly homemade, uh, spinner, well, remade, uh, several times over, revamped, re-put together, repainted spinnerbait here that I use, um, in the springtime. And, um, I put this twin tail on it and I said, I need something more, more red. And that is what I came up with right there. Here it is on a, on a little jig color pattern that I'll use this time of year. Okay, so, so I got my cup ready to go, and um, I'm almost out of this stuff. This is what I've been using, is the uh, Bait Plastics uh, Medium Plastisol 242 Ultra Clear Low Odor, and uh, this stuff works really well, but uh, it's also really expensive. It's about $50 a gallon, and um, I can't find a better deal on Plastisol anywhere than this stuff uh, here. Uh, I've looked at you know other companies that sell it. If anybody knows of one, uh, you can get a gallon for less than fifty dollars with shipping. Uh, let me know. Love to love to learn about that. Love to try it out. But uh, we are almost out of this stuff right here. So that's about all I want to make right now. And we're gonna get this up to temperature, and then we're gonna start adding the dye. All right. Okay. 
Might have got this one a little too hot. Don't get distracted when you're cooking your plastic, guys. <laughs> just leaving it in the microwave just a little too long. It kind of got a little gold color, but no worries. I think we're still going to be good here. So let's get out our stuff. Um, I think I used, did I use the regular red? What do we do? Uh, there we go. No, I think I used the dark red because it was already opened, right? Yes, I did. Okay. So this is dark red. Six drops of that. And then two drops of orange. I'm getting to turn on my ventilation. Okay, so I was using um, a gold hologram in there and a copper, black hologram. This is like a brown, a shiny dark brown. I don't know what exactly that is. And then a goodly amount of a fine red. Sounds like wine. If I can get it to come out. There we go. Okay. So a lot of sparkles in a little cup. That'll be all right, though. Okay, that looks like it is ready to go. I'm gonna set my mold up and uh, shoot it. So let me clean this mess up. Okay, let's open this mold live in our camera. See if I screwed it up. We do have some flashing clearly over there. Let's develop the hole on this side. I should fill it with some super glue, but oh, that's not bad. Look at that regular guy. You did a regular job right there. Regular good job. All right. Just a little bit of trimming on these dudes. Not dogs. I'm not allowed to say dogs, apparently. Yeah, this one kind of collapsed a skosh. But that'll still work. Bats aren't going to notice that. But I like that color. This one kind of came out a little more orangey. I think I might have put... I should probably write this stuff down. I think I only put one drop of orange in the other one, but that's the original color. Camera one, camera two, camera one, camera two, right? Um, but close enough, and that's still like the color I want. It's still better than, than this color here, uh, as far as I'm concerned. This is not a bad color, but I wanted intense red for my springtime bass fishing, which if you live in the South is coming on strong so um you need to be prepared now but um this color like i said is not bad i just wanted something more intense like that some of my more astute viewers may have noticed that i was uh, in the process of heating that cup up and i'm going to show you why we're going to see if with our uh with our dye here if we can make our whites whiter and our brights brighter i think somebody else uses that as a commercial but um, we'll check it out and um, see if we can't uh, do some stuff with some remelts I got over here and see if it uh, comes out a little nicer than what we got. Okay, it is mixed up. there's a lot going on in there. I don't know if the camera can pick up a lot of color shift chameleon, a lot of red gold and all sorts of colored sparkles in there. So let us add some red to this mix and see if we can't make it redder, more red. Reddest? Why don't I just stir that up, guy, before you... 
I don't know if this works or not. I've never done it before. We're doing it live and on camera. I should have done the world's worst fishing trick and laid out a spread of it here on my very clean bench so that I could see how it changes. But no problem at all mixing this dye in. I'm just going to have to learn. I've never really used dye before. I've always try, mixed my colors or made my colors off of old other colors. So we got two colors there. So we're going to go with some orange too to change it that direction. But it accepts this stuff really well. It, I haven't had a problem so far with it changing color in the heat or anything like that. I don't know what color you'd call this, but it's certainly ugly. It's cooling off though. We probably got to heat it up a skosh. Okay. We had a lot of food coloring in there. It's almost more purpley. I can't really see a difference in those three colors from here. This one has the most dye in it. This one has just the original amount of dye in it. Um, like I said, I didn't have a, uh, I didn't say, oh, here we go. I did right here. Don't worry, uh, the regular baits, uh, regular guy lures have not been picked up by Bass Pro Shops Tournament Series. This is a reduce, reuse situation. Uh, these bait bags are excellent and they last a long time. They're pretty heavy duty. Uh, so I uh, reuse them and I remelt and then I get to relax while I go fishing. So yeah, this is definitely red -er. So let's shoot it and uh, see what the finished product looks like. Okay, that one went a lot better. Turns out when the uh, injector is full, it uh, functions the way it's supposed to. Who'd have thought? Let's let this cool. Okay, again, live and on camera. Let's see what we get. How was that, huh? Who else would show you an unmolding or demolding or unboxing, whatever you call that, taking out of the moldness, that messed up. <laughs> Just a regular guy. These things happen to a regular guy. Um, and this again, this is a shape here. Uh, this twin tail was inspired by um, a mold that my father had uh, when I was a kid. And uh, it was our favorite for jig trailers. Uh, you know, somebody had asked me once, uh, my good friend, the Lunker Jack asked me once, why do the tails go out instead of in like everything else? And, uh, I was like, cause it's different. You know, it's like spinal tap. Ours go to 11, right? No, just me. Okay. Anyway, um, the, uh, yeah, it's different. Nobody else has it. This is, uh, homemade. My nephew, Ben, the wonder 3d printer helped me make this on his uh, computer CAD program and 3D printed it up. And, uh, you know, it made an excellent mold here. Um, and, uh, and I love how it works. So thank you to him. And, uh, you know, nobody else has this. So uh, aside from the few folks I've sent some to, but uh, yeah, this is like, you know, it's kind of cool because I catch a ton of fish. If you follow the channel, uh, thank you for those who have liked, commented, and subscribed and all that other business. Uh, you've seen pictures of bass, you know, uh, and redfish caught with this here trailer. So uh, it does work. Either that means the fish are completely unsophisticated and don't care, or 
if the message I'm trying to get across here, just a regular guy, you guys can do this yourself. You don't have to be beholden to the big bait companies, the big fishing companies that want more money than you need to be spending on something that's supposed to be fun and relaxing. So, um, you know, even this doesn't, this does not look, you know, like it'd be made by these folks here, like super professional, whatever. It's good enough, I promise. And you can get as creative and crazy as you want with your homemade lures and spend the kind of loot that you want to spend on specialty tools. And there's nothing wrong with that. I just appreciate that you guys are out there having the conversations, doing it yourself and making your own things. So, you know, and if you just don't want to and you just want to watch me be a fool here in the garage and, and do this stuff, then that's fine too. But um, I like that color. It's definitely more red. Let's look and compare and I'll stop flapping my gums. This is the, uh, this is the one from last year's deal or leftovers. Look at that. And this is the uh, ginned up version with our, with our food coloring here. So um, definitely more intense red on that. Uh, this one's got a, like, I got that bluish red mica powder sprinkled on it. So that's not how the color actually looks. These are more red. Anyway, uh, all that to say, so that definitely works. Let's see what else we can uh, brighten up here with our, with our new food color. Okay, I, uh, I did pull this up here. I meant to say it earlier, but uh, yeah. So this was $9 for 10 of these little bottles of, uh, of this oil-based uh, fo uh, food coloring here. Um, and um, from what I've seen shopping around, when you buy the, the colors individually for uh, making this stuff, specifically for bait uh, lure making, uh, it's usually about 8 to nine dollars just for the one bottle uh it may be a bigger bottle but again that's only one color so if you want to experiment i didn't think this was a terrible terribly bad deal and as we've seen so far it is working really well so okay so the color i'm going to be working on now this is turned a couple, this is all the, from the same cup, right? As it's uh, changed over time here. Uh, this is my supposed to be June bug color. Um, it's gone from kind of a bluish to a more intense purple over here. And then it started to peter out into this, uh, you know, poor excuse for a June bug. Uh, this was probably my favorite stuff over here. These ones were kind of neat. Um, this is an experimental tiny one. Um, I think these are too big to and too small all at the same time to flap. But anyway, um, so this is the color we're at right now. So we're gonna uh, heat this plastic a little more. Hopefully don't overheat it, guy. And add a little bit of uh, the purple to it and see if we can't uh, gin it up. Start out with six drops. Did that do anything for us? Six or so more. I'm sure this contrasts well and comes through really well. I could have used a plate or something. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, on my messy table over here uh, that the regular editor really, really, really wants me to refinish. Okay, so... That's the original six drops and 12 drops. That is definitely more purple. 
Uh, I don't know if the camera is picking it up, but it has definitely changed the base of that to more purple. And that one was still a little warm, but we don't worry about that. I'm going to try to add, uh, now that's the same color there, guy. We'll do some. That's dark blue. That's not what I wanted to do. Disregard that. Sky blue and green. Okay. Uh, why don't I shoot that? before we get bananas here. And let's see what we've got. Okay, let's see what we got. Let's see if that injection worked. Didn't feel right, but what do I know? Because it worked. <laughs> Ugh. Okay, so we've got, this was the last batch I made with the color that you just saw before we prettied it up. And I think we've got a more intense purple over here. Do this side by each here. And like I said, I'm just learning how to use this dye. So I don't know if, uh, you know, add uh, six more or a dozen more colors, uh, drops to it or blue, you know, how that's going to go. But that is definitely more uh, purpley than these guys over here. Um, and again, who knows if the camera does it justice, right? But uh, I can see it here and I got no reason to lie to you because it cost me nine bucks. And if I wasn't impressed, I would tell you that. This is the first time I tried this to gin these colors up like this, and it seems to be working. And I don't know how intense I can make it, but uh, we'll try it again and uh, see what we get. Okay, I've never tried this before, but I <clears throat> didn't do this on camera because I was really afraid I was gonna mess it up. I was able to uh, brighten up my chartreuse, which has lost its chartreuseness. Uh, with one drop of green food coloring and two drops of yellow. And uh, it got a little more intense, so that was cool. So I tried something crazy here, folks. I poured it into the tails of my shrimp mold. These are going to need some trimming up for sure because there's like way too much flashing. But I did get a purple shrimp with a chartreuse tail. Um... And that's a pretty intense purple right there. So I like that. This guy's still a little uh, squishy. So they probably got to wait a little bit. But um, one of the uh, new viewers, hopefully he becomes a regular viewer, asked me about, uh, that tail didn't work, but that's okay. Um, you know, when I was coating these originally with petroleum jelly uh, in the experimental phase, you know, how do you clean it up to, uh, you know, to go to the next step, like to, to paint it, right? Um, well, I'll answer on, on the comment section too, you know, cause that's half the fun, right? But, um, but for those of you watching, that's just, you know, that's that qu question's been on the tip of your tongue. The first time you shoot the mold with that petroleum jelly in there, this, uh, it stuff absorbs it and it is gonzos, right? If there's any left, you can wipe it out. But, uh, if you shoot it, it's going to absorb it and it's, um, uh, and it, you know, it's not in the mold anymore. This is sprayed with Pam right now, which is kind of why it's a little greasy, but also, um, after I find out the mold is going to work, uh, I experiment with petroleum jelly as a, as a mold release to see if it works, if it needs to be tweaked. I like it. I coat it all with polyurethane. Fast drying polyurethane is the best mold release. So, uh, my regular editor and lovely assistant, uh, did a great short about that too. So, um, that's, that's my favorite mold release. People also have told me over and over again to use Pam cooking spray. And I was scared that it wouldn't work in these, and it definitely does. So after I uh, coat it with two coats of uh, polyurethane, then um, before I shoot it, I'll give it a quick squirt with the, uh, it doesn't have to be Pam, that was just the on sale stuff. Um, and uh, it helps this stuff come right out. Look at that, Whew. look at that, comes right out. All right, regular viewers, this is what we got. Um, just with this, uh, product right here oil-based food coloring uh nine dollars for ten different colors it's a great way to experiment with it uh i got my reds redder and uh that piece isn't supposed to be there my purple's purpler 
Uh, my chartreuses, chartreuses, I don't, that's not a word, sorry. Um, but I am ready for my springtime fishing, which is what the focus was today with this ugly jig and this ugly spinnerbait. And uh, I'm actually going to go get out on the water. So enough of this. Guys, uh, thank you so much for all the support. The channel is growing like crazy, and I can't believe it. Um, we've surpassed uh, 500 subscribers. We've almost got to the first level of uh, whatever YouTube wants you to do. Um, so that's pretty exciting. We're going to find out what that all means here, hopefully. But thank you again. I couldn't do it without your support, your comments, uh, your subscriptions, your uh, likes, sharing, and all that other youtube -y stuff if you have questions about this please let me know i'll try to get back to them um and yeah again the point guys is i'm just a regular guy i make this with regular stuff on my regular budget uh you can do it too i want to see your stuff if you want to send me pictures of the stuff that you're making uh how cool it looks and and how hard you're working whatever i didn't know if you guys would be interested in doing like a viewers spotlight section there or kind of you know uh show that stuff off uh, what you folks are working on at home um, let me know in the comments or you can send an email which should hopefully appear right a boot now down this area um, and uh, send an email to that otherwise thank you so much for watching and you stay regular Hey, what are you kids doing? <laughs>